All right, time for Cats Ranks here on March Madness, March Madness 365, with a look at the top 20 candidates for the Jerry West Award. That is the wing, the two guard, the shooting guard. Now, a lot of these positions are getting blurred over the years, uh, and sometimes I, you know, got a little bit of a flack if I've got someone in the point guard versus the wing, so want to make sure these are much more wings than point guards. Uh, there's probably only one player that you could say on this list could be sliding a little bit more toward a playmaker, but he's not a great assist player, and that's my player at number 20, and that's Bryce Aiken uh, from Seton Hall, former Harvard player, averaged 14, excuse me, 16 a game at Harvard, uh, but under two assists a game. So he's much more of a playmaking shooting guard than he is a playmaking distributor. So for now, we're going to put Bryce Aiken at number 20 on this list. Make sure he's healthy for Seton Hall, the transfer from Harvard. All right, number 19, Austin Reeves from Oklahoma. 14, 5, and 3 for the Sooners last season. Doesn't get a lot of pub, and really the Sooners don't do a great job of promoting their guys. Maybe that's by design, but we're going to give Austin Reeves some love here. At number 18, Jose Alvarado from... Georgia Tech. Uh, Jose at 14 points a game, four assists a game. Uh, you know, he could be, be a difference maker for the Yellow Jackets, a team that I think is going to make the NCAA tournament. At number 17, Javon Jackson from UTSA. He is a stat stuffer from Texas San Antonio, averaging 26 a game last season. At number 16, I've had this player on my list a couple of years now, and it's been a little up and down, but he's an outstanding individual, high character, unbelievable work. We talked to him on this podcast about what he's doing off the court in terms of social justice. Uh, his grandmother was a social activist in South Africa. Kellen Grady from Davidson, uh, averaging 17 a game, deserves to be on this list. Blake Francis from Richmond, checking in one spot above out of the A-10. He's averaging 17 shoots, over 40%. I think Richmond's going to have an outstanding season. They could go on a deep run. Let's go to Creighton. Mitch Ballack, uh, big-time shooter, over 40%, uh, 11 points a game. He's going to be a big three-point maker for the Blue Jays this season. Let's go out west. Derek Alston, Jr. from Boise State. He averages 17 a game, and if the Broncos win the Mountain West Conference, it'll be because of Derek Alston. Going back to the Big 12, Miles McBride from West Virginia, averaging nearly 10 a game. I think those numbers will increase this season. Going back to the A-10, Jordan Goodwin from St. Louis. He's a double-double guy, 15 and 10. And the Billikens should be an NCAA tournament team this season and a team that will challenge Richmond for that A-10 title. In the Big East, David Duke checks in here in my top grouping out of Providence. You could go Duke, you could go Reeves. Uh, there's no question that I think David Duke will have a banner season for the Friars, averaging a dozen points, shooting over 40% last season. I think those numbers will increase. Out West, Will Richardson from Oregon. He benefited having Peyton Pritchard uh, at the point last season. Pritchard is gone. Richardson still will need to flourish. Uh, he shoots nearly 50% from the field. So Richardson, I think, will flourish in this role as well, getting even more touches. Potential breakthrough player out of Villanova, Justin Moore, checking in in my top 10. Averaged 11 points a game last season. I think those numbers will climb for Justin Moore. Back in the Big 12, Maceo Teague averaged 13 points a game last season. You pair him with Jared Butler, it's one of the best backcourts in the country. Right above him, A.J. Lawson from South Carolina. Another team I probably should have been higher on in terms of a bubble team as we looked going forward toward the NCAA tournament uh, bracketing that we started already. I like Lawson. I like this Gamecock team. I think they will rise up in the SEC. He averaged 13 a game. That number could climb. Joel Ayayi from Gonzaga. Flirted with the NBA draft. He's back. Averaged only 10 a game last season, but those numbers are going to climb because he's going to have more touches this season. He'll be paired with Jalen Suggs, um, another wing that I'll have an outstanding season for Gonzaga. But I think Ayayi has blossomed into a player that could be an All-American type player. Let's go into our top four here. And this could go in any order. Caleb Mills from Houston. 13 points a game. He could be the player of the year in the American. And the Cougars will be the favorite to win the American Athletic Conference. 
Now, here's where it gets interesting, and I know I'm going to get a lot of pushback here. At number three, I got Joshua Langford from Michigan State. If he weren't hurt, first of all, he wouldn't even be here because he wouldn't have gotten the extra year, but he's a big-time scorer, 15 a game. He can go for 20, 25. So if he's healthy, he's got to be top three. At number two, out of the Missouri Valley, the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year, A.J. Green from Northern Iowa, averaging just a hair under 20 points a game at 19. Those numbers are going to increase. The Panthers are the favorite in the Valley. And here's where I'll get some pushback, but got to take some chances. I'm going with a freshman at number one and B.J. Boston out of Kentucky. Uh, look, Boston's going to be on that wing. He's going to get a lot of touches and high productivity, productivity for Kentucky. And so I think he could put up great numbers for the Wildcats. So I took a gamble here. I went with a young guy, a freshman, not a proven player, at number one. We'll see how I get, you know, in terms of the engagement off of that. So, 20 candidates for Jerry West Award this season. That wing, that shooting guard here in college basketball.